Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. After a few weeks fun flying the Mobula 7 HD it's now died and it needs fixing and while it's in the shop I decided it's time to upgrade a few things I mentioned in my review. So let's try and fathom out what's wrong with this. I landed the Mobula 7 in some long wet grass the other day and it just died. Now I'm pretty sure I know what's wrong with it but I thought it would be interesting to show how to troubleshoot and fix it. And if you get problems like this it's tempting to rush out and just frantically buy new parts. So I've stripped it down and just left the Crazy B F4 and the motors in place. And if I plug a battery in there's nothing. Fully charged. Totally dead. So it looks for all the world like the Crazy B flight controller, all in one flight controller, has just fried. But if I power it up using a USB cable, Crazy B magically bursts into life. And more importantly, if I plug the battery in as well, the motors all work. Welcome to OpenTX. So, what's going on here? Well, flight controllers are commonly powered by 5 volts and the ESCs and motors need the full battery power. And in this case, that's 12 volts. This is a 3S battery. So, somewhere on this board is a voltage regulator or a BEC that provides 5 volts from the battery power to power it up. And the 12 volts goes directly to the ESC section of the PCB to power up the motors. And it's all designed so the battery and the USB power can be safely connected at the same time without interfering with each other. So somewhere on this PCB there's a diode that stops the battery feeding back through the USB connector and possibly frying your computer. And because the flight controller doesn't power up when just the battery is connected, this suggests the 5 volt regulator is blown, so the flight controller itself won't power up. And when I plug in the USB connector, it'll get 5 volts from the USB, and that's what it needs to turn on. And because the motors turn on when the battery is connected, there's nothing wrong with the ESCs. So, I could just replace the board. But where's the fun in that? And it'll take a few weeks for one to turn up and it's going to cost me money. So I'm going to try and replace the blown 5 volt regulator on this board. Taking a closer look at the board, this is probably where the regulator is. It'll be a buck or a boost switching regulator because this is a coil so it's in this area. But there's nothing obviously fried so I can't just replace a single component. So I'm going to have to get creative if I'm going to replace that voltage regulator. Now if you take a close look at this board, this is where the 12 volts comes in, just here and here. And there's a pad over here that's marked 5 volts. So it's probably there to power some LEDs between these two here. So I can use a new 5 volt regulator and connect it to this pad and it should all work and fire up the flight controller. Before we start sourcing some sort of replacement we need to know how much current the 5 volt line on here takes. And you can use one of these USB power meters to measure it. So that's all powered up and this looks like it's taking about 420 milliamps or 0.42 of an amp. So we need a 5 volt regulator that takes an input voltage of at least 12 volts and is spec at around 1 amp just to be on the safe side. For this application you can't use a linear regulator like this because the voltage across it when you're using 3S is 7 volts and that's 12 volts minus 5 volts. So 
with nearly half an amp going through here you're going to be dissipating around three and a half watts across this device and that's just not going to work you'll need a massive heat sink otherwise it's just going to fry so the easiest thing to do is to use a switching regulator like this Pololu that's rated at one amp continuous it'll take anywhere between five and a half and fifty volts in which is plenty and we get five volts out so that should be beefy enough and the reason we use a switching regulator is because it's more efficient than a linear regulator so it doesn't generate as much wasted power and gets nowhere near as hot let's get this soldered in so as if by magic that's all soldered in place I've just got a piece of foam tape under here to insulate it from the board but I'll put some heat shrink over that now we've got the connections here on the Pololu we've got input ground and output so we've got ground coming in here 12 volts coming in there and the output is going to the 5 volt pin which would normally be an output from the flight controller but in this case we're actually using it as an input so first things first before we connect anything up let's have a quick check and make sure that we haven't shorted out anything on the board that's great so that's all fine so let's just connect a battery and hopefully yay there we go all powered up as it should be and nope that's not getting hot at all and having a look at this I wonder if the onboard regulator isn't up to handling 3S and it's just blown I know I landed it in some wet grass but it's got me thinking if you compare this voltage regulator here with whatever is on the board this is fairly beefy this will handle one amp and the spec for the back on the board says one amp not quite sure I believe that I know this was a problem on the original 2S Mobula 7 and if you've had any problems like this please let me know in the comments one of the other problems with this quad that I pointed out in my review is that it doesn't have a buzzer and finding this in long grass can be tricky even the Mobula 7 non HD version had a buzzer so we're going to wire in this small buzzer onto the board basically there are two pads just under here there and there so I've wired the buzzer in here you just need a couple of wires connected to these two pads you need to be pretty careful and have a fairly fine soldering iron tip and make sure you use plenty of flux I've left these wires quite long because I'm not quite sure where I'm going to squeeze this in yet let's check this out and see that it works battery connected yeah buzzer's working another job done let's get this covered in some heat shrink so that it doesn't short out on anything the next job on the list is to replace the onboard receiver with an external one now I've had issues with the crazy bee receiver fail safing just randomly and if you read the info on the beta flight page I've linked below this is a known issue when you're using FR Sky X and FR Sky D and the telemetry settings possibly due to some sort of frame overrun there's been a few fixes posted for this but I'd just like to replace the receiver with an external FR Sky XM Plus anyway just to get some better range and there's also some weird binding issues with the onboard receiver which I've covered in another video which is linked up here changing the receiver is pretty easy the crazy b f4 board conveniently has an irx1 inverted input for s bus just here and we can pick up the 5 volts and ground that we need to power the receiver from these points here so there we go that's all connected up magically we've got the s bus connected to the irx1 pin just here and then we picked up 
5 volts and ground from the edge connector here. Let's just check that it works. Uh, plug a battery in. There we go. Excellent, we've got power on the board and we've got power on the XM Plus and the red light's flashing on there because we're not bound. And because this is just a regular XM Plus receiver, I can just use serial SBUS protocol when I bind. And this means the onboard receiver is effectively disabled, which means I could completely remove that antenna. So, we've got our modified board and I've tested everything to make sure it all works. We just need to bind the receiver and just set all this stuff back together. That's it, all back together. Take care when you're fixing the canopy on and don't get any of the wires caught up. I did have to relocate the new 5 volt back just under the top of the canopy here. There just wasn't enough room to squeeze it between the flight controller and the CADEX PCB. And I just made the wires a little bit longer. The XM Plus is mounted underneath. I cut some bits out of the heat shrink for the bind button and the LEDs. It's probably best to use some clear heat shrink, but I just didn't have any the right size. And make sure all the wires are neatly pushed back under the canopy so they don't get caught on the props or any branches. And be particularly careful with the CADEX multi-way cable here. It's actually really fragile, but if you do break anything, they are available on the CADEX website for just $6. And I also painted some conformal coating like this on the Crazy Bee PCB and on the back of the PCB on the CADEX, which doesn't have the protective plastic plate like the V2 version does. The receiver antennas are pushed through the top of the canopy and I've put a couple of these antenna tubes I'd lying around and they're fixed on with a dab of hot glue. All that's needed now is to get the correct receiver setting sorted out in Betaflight and I'm done. So we've got our quad connected to our computer. Just check it's working. I've got my transmitter on. Ports, these are all the same. Now the thing you're going to have to change is in configuration. Out of the box, the receiver will be SPI RX support and it'll either be FR Sky X or probably FR Sky D. Now because we've got an external receiver now that's just a simple FR Sky XM Plus, we need to change that to serial based and SBUS. As simple as that. So let's do a save and reboot. Reconnect to the quad. Check the transmitter. And here we can see everything is talking to the quad. Excellent. Hopefully that was helpful. Sometimes when you're starting out, it's tricky to troubleshoot issues. And there's so many variables in the hardware and the firmware you can really get confused and frustrated. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit to the channel, please subscribe for updates. I'll see you next time.